Welcome to this Weight of Fire video where I'm going to be looking at the Barons Wars Medieval Skirmish Game Rulebook. Uh, this is produced by Footsaw Miniatures. It's a game by Andy Hobday to um, support the range of miniatures that both Andy and Paul Hicks produced through uh, three Kickstarters. The third one's about to start. Um, two previous Kickstarters over the last couple of years and now Footsaw Miniatures is producing those. Um, the rules only came out uh, just before Christmas time. I picked mine up at retail uh, just a month or so ago and finally got around to doing a video. So um, this is the rule set and then I have the token set here as well. So this is a double sided MDF token set um, showing the different conditions that you can have in the game. It's a skirmish game so there's always tokens, lots of tokens. Now being MDF and coloured they're quite nice actually, uh, better than card ones. Uh, I really like them. They might get a bit scraped, I guess, as you use them more and more. Uh, and it is £7 for this MDF set, which is perhaps a little bit on the steeper side, but I do quite like them. I think there'll be enough there for one faction. Um, possibly you might need another one for if, for your whoever you're playing against. The reason I say that is if you're repeating an action, you're typically looking like running six six groups and obviously there's eight of each one so if you if you were to both do all of the act, same action which is unlikely but if you were then you might find that you're running out of these so maybe I'll end up picking up another one just so my opponent also has one so seven pounds for the MDF token set but there are card ones uh, sorry paper ones at the back of the um, book and you can download them as well from Warhost or from the Facebook group so Let's just have a look at this Baron's War rule set. So, I mean, the first thing to say is much smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's actually much more sort of, well, large pocket sized. And I'll show you an example. So this is a Osprey rule set. You probably all recognize these sorts of style of size. And you can see it's quite a bit smaller than, than the center one, but it is hefty. It's a decent sized book. So, soft bound, glued in spine, lovely full colour art on the front by Peter Dennis. Uh, this is William the Marshal, obviously one of the heroic figures of this time. Um, the Barons Wars, I haven't said actually, yeah, being 1215, 1217. Um, a civil war essentially in uh, England. Um, but England in those days wasn't really England in the way we look at it now. It was also encompassed the um, Norman fiefdoms in Normandy and France so if you want to go a little bit earlier 1203-1204 then which the uniforms would be fine for then um, you could also play this for any of the sort of western nations and even into some of the later crusades the fifth and sixth crusade for instance um, simple tagline a medieval skirmish game um, I think that's underselling it a little bit, to be honest. I think it's a lot more than just a medieval skirmish game. It's a full package, really, because a supporting line of miniatures as well. The other thing I'd like to say about the art is I really, really like the back cover as much as I like the front, because the front's all grand, and, yeah, right, these guys are a bit worn and stuff. Uh, and you've got a knight there, and it's nice that they're all a little disheveled, as the miniatures at the supports range are as well. You know, there's little bits of missing off the tabard here and there, and a little bit of rent in a male shirt but on the back this is what war is like um, in my view horrible basically you know complete devastation here there's a walled town or castle that's been destroyed in the background here no one looks very happy um, devastation of this forest to cut down for trebuchets and siege engines or just for camp equipment I, I think that really hits home as being you know, it's not just the glory of it, it's actually, particularly in a civil war, horrific sort of things. So, anyway, enough of that, let's have a look inside. So, full colour, glossy, very nice, lots of beautiful pictures, uh, colour pictures from Peter Dennis in here. Excellent miniatures and photography of the miniatures. Um, there's... Quite a bit of sort of introduction and rules. You can see here all the different chapters um, showing you about the different tokens and again these wonderful miniatures and it's dotted throughout. You need D10s to play and then it shows a D6 for showing the 
morale of a unit, but actually you could use any sort of token or counter or something like that to show what the morale was. It doesn't have to be a dice, but it only goes up to six, so that's obviously why they've chosen a dice to show it. Um, I guess I'll probably use dice, they're easy, aren't they? There's a lot of nice little explanation bits, so these red boxes tell you a little bit about the age, you know, different things, so this is about chivalry, there's one later on about William the Marshal, and there's other lords mentioned, because there's a lot about heroes in here, and then there's the, the standard rules, of course, and the rules go on for quite a bit, talking about the groups, how they must sort of be deployed, um, the rules take you to about page 47, Shows you the stat profile here, movement, attacking, defense, morale. I think this is quite similar to other games from Andy Hobday and Footsaw, so Mortal Gods, but I've not played those, so I couldn't say for certain. Um, shows you how the round works, how the tokens work. I really like these uh, stylized uh, medieval representations. I think they're fantastic. I think it's a really, really nice touch. The little bit of blood on the edge is a bit annoying, I must say, of the book, because it occasionally covers over text, makes that slightly more difficult to read, but, uh, you know, they're going for something a bit fancy. Um, shows you how the groups move. So everyone moves in a group, effectively. Um, commanders even join groups. So it's all about these small groups of troops, uh, infantry or cavalry. Standard size for infantry is at least three models, for cavalry is at least two models. Um, a very bizarre looking way of working out how you fight, and this is the same whether it's range shooting or um, melee combat, but actually it does all make sense, it's just a bit peculiar to see something like that lined up in a war games book. It looks like something much more you would see on, um, you know, something you might use for work or something like that. Um, if A happens, do B, that sort of thing. Um, but actually once you've read it through, it, it makes complete sense, so that's fine. Really nice diagrams throughout and again the color is just really good very clear the whole wording of the book apart from a few typos is is actually really really clear it reads like a very professional um, professionally well written book trying to reduce the ambiguity as much as possible and again just more color art morale of course and then here we go, so at page 48, you know, we've, we've basically done the rules now, and we've still got two-thirds of the book to go. Uh, here, it's all about building your retinue, and this is clearly where the fun is to be had, because, let's take the example here, so the spearmen, they give you an example of, again, with some more wonderful miniatures by the side. You can decide, determine the type of class of troop you want so do you want to be more or less trained and there's a points associated with that some abilities that may come with that and their stat profile changes as well so if you've got a veteran fighter he fights better he's been in more combat than the guy who's just been pulled out of the field um, and then you can change some of the equipment that he's armed with and you buy for the whole group so all of them can be armed with bills uh, which is like a big uh, agricultural hook at the end of a stick rather than a spear um, they can be upgraded to leather armor or to uh, mail, and they can be given shields. And then they have a special ability depending on whether they're in the right class or not. And that's for spearmen, but you've got similar things here for knights. So you can have either a foot knight, which has these sort of options, or you can have a mounted knight, which has these. And again, they have a varying cost, varying abilities, and of course their stat profile also changes. You can't have green knights, they've all had some degree of training. That's in the uh, in the title really and you've got those philosophy things so sergeants crossbowmen bowmen spearmen militant monks very cross monks never make a monk cross levy uh, so these are your slightly more basic guys um, maybe a rudiments of training and then that's it for the troops so there's not massive amounts of troops but plenty of different options because particularly as you can change their weapons up. So even though these are levy, you've got slingers, spearmen, two-handed here, you know, lots of different options in there. Uh, and then we go on to commanders, and commanders are really important. So you either have a baron or a lord, okay? So this is a stat profile for a baron, and this one's for a lord who's slightly less good. Let's take the example of a lord. It looks a lot like the knights we saw before. You can have a mounted one, or you can have one on foot. Similar sorts of options. Slightly different abilities. And they can be upgraded to have someone carrying a pennant with them, a, uh, a small banner, a musician, or even a priest to come with them, which gives them other associated abilities. And they'll work as a group, and they'll attach to one of your other groups. So you might want to put these with your knights on foot if you have a, 
a lord on foot. Um, there are some restrictions, so they can't go with levy, for instance. Um, you can also have veteran sergeants, because you can have more than one commander. Um, it doesn't have to be, only one will be the commander of your army, but you can have others who can step up to the mark should your leader be killed. And I think, certainly from my point of view, one of the big attractions of this is sort of uh, that role-playing game element, that campaign element where you name your character and you, you know, your veteran sergeant gets, um, as he evolves in the course of your mini campaign, you can add to his story. Now, having said that, at the moment, there's no sort of campaign element to this rule set, but I believe that's something that will be in uh, next Kickstarter, which is coming out at the end of this month, uh, 21st of March 2021. Um, where there'll be a campaign element and I presume there you'll be able to increase the quality of your uh, commanders and increase the quality of their equipment perhaps but I don't know that for certain um, the red box so a bit more history there and then there's also a bit here the knight commander generator so you can use those base ones or you can start from scratch and build your own so this these couple of pages are about how to start with a really basic profile so seven is bad for fighting and you upgrade depending on what you want to so you spend a, a point so to increase his fighting cost you two points per point you go up and you go down to a maximum of three plus and so on and so forth um it's just about command and how you use command equipment available uh, what i didn't show was that there are let's go back to one of these so there are actions. So this is a number of things a unit can do in a round. Most units only do one action around, so shoot a bow or move or something like that. Um, lords and other commanders can often do more than one, and one of the reasons for that is that they don't have to just do it themselves. They can actually use those actions on other people to make others move in their uh, stead, so to inspire their troops, for instance. Um, if you move more than once, though, you're likely to gain a weary token, um, which means that you're less good if someone does then attack you because you've been overexerting yourself. So going on to the next bits, um, then we've got abilities. There's a lot of abilities, possibly too many, I, I would perhaps suggest. There are pages and pages of them. Uh, and there's a slight, some of them are sort of abilities for the weapons and so on. And then there's abilities a bit more for commanders and stuff like that. And so there's about six, six or seven pages. My problem with them is that if you look here, the levy of sorry, my lord. So now I have to go and find sorry, my lord in here. So it's, it's, oh, there it is. I actually found it quite quickly this time. I don't have to read with that. So there's a bit of going backwards and forwards between these two pages. I think when you get used to it, you're not going to have an issue because you'll know what the ones that you use are. And some of these are very specific for certain characters, uh, as we'll come on to in a moment, which sort of wonder whether they didn't just need to be in the profile of those special characters. But um, I think when you, what you'll do is there is at the end of a book a way of... Uh, there it is. So you can write your roster down, so write the abilities out by hand. I think that's probably what I'll do when it comes to actually playing a game, and it'll be fairly easy then. Um, there are some historic characters, so it's a skirmish game, and although historical characters are rarely heroic, and certainly King John here is far from heroic, I think, in most people's impression, um, it's slightly um, more sort of fantastical in the fact that, you know, they're better fighters or something like that, but I think it's, it's done in a nice way, that they're not superheroes, um, they've got some negatives as well, particularly someone like King John, for instance, um, there are different abilities. You have William Marshall here, Prince Louis of France who comes over, um, Stephen Langton, Archbishop of Canterbury, Robert Fitzwalter, he's one of the main rebels, um, Hubert de Burry, the royalist, and then, you know, I'm not even going to say his name. Where we come to next, though, taking on that um, sort of fun element to this as well is we actually got Robin Hood in here. Robin Hood and his merry men and women. So we get Robin Hood, there he is at the bottom, and we get Maid Marion as well, Little John, Friar Tuck, Will Scarlet. They're the only named ones, but I think you would run these either as um, a team themselves, or I think you can I'm not quite sure, but I think you can also run several of them leading other bands. So you could have them leading some levy or some bowmen if you wanted a full um, 
Merry Men Force. I, I think these are a really nice touch. They give a really good fun element to it. Um, I'm very excited to get those and paint those up and see what um, how they play because I imagine they'll be play quite differently. They've got lots of special rules which uh, means that they're going to play play very differently from that point of view because you're going to have to look up what they do and to make the most of you know Robin's shooting and Marion's calming influence and little John's ability to bash people around the head. You know they they work differently each of them. Um, so finding those synergies sounds quite good fun. And then the sort of final bit really is uh, scenarios, of which there are 15, which is a decent number. I'm really quite impressed by that. A standard game is meant to be played on a four foot by three foot table. It doesn't give you a standard point size. Um, I'm not quite sure what the standard point size is. Um, you've got these 15 scenarios, tells you how to lay out the table. And then what I really like is this, which looks a bit like something from 40k actually, where you choose the deployment zones so you do a roll off like i say it's a d10 system um and then you choose which uh, of the colored or uh deployment zones you want so they could be a distance apart or they could be right next to each other and it depends on the scenario as well as what you're going to do there are objectives in quite a lot of scenarios you might need up to a maximum of six so 40 millimeter bases is what they say for these objectives so an opportunity to do some nice modeling there um i've certainly got some um Mantic terrain crate stuff. I think I'm going to put on 40 millimeter bases to make mine. Um, so that's that's really nice. And then each of the scenarios has its own special rules. So there's a, a pretty basic sort of fight there, attrition, a field of glory. You could also have hidden treasures. You could kill a traitor. There's a really smart one somewhere. I can't find it now. Uh, this one, chosen warriors, where you get a an extra unit and you have to destroy the opponent's sort of chosen men uh, and protect your own from being killed. I really like that one. Um, yeah, I think they're really inventive, these scenarios. That they obviously look like they'll play quite differently. Um, and then I, I'm, yeah, 15 is a really nice number to do other stuff. Uh, the rest of it here is just a clarification of more terrain, glossary, and so on and so forth. So I won't go into that. Um, I really like this rule set, really nice. £15 for the rule set. At the moment, there's a deal on, so for, uh, you can get, I think it's £20 for the rule set and the tokens, or, or the rule set and a PDF of the rule set, I can't remember which. Um, yeah, really nice set. They've already said that they're going to put up on their website, Warhost Online, uh, Dark Age or Early Medieval lists which will be Normans, Vikings, later Saxons. Um, and I think they've already mentioned that they might well take this into Outremer, the Crusader lands, um, which would be uh, really exciting and a fascinating sort of period again. And I imagine the core rules will stay basically the same because most of the differences are on the unit types and the weapons. So I can't see there being any huge differences in how the game plays. Um, there are a few typos in there. There's already an FAQ and a Rata out, which is actually quite brief, though it's not particularly uh, big. My only downside is, like I say, I think there's perhaps a few too many abilities, and that because it's a glued softback, you can see that the spine is already starting to go, and I've not even used this in anger yet. Um, but that's, oh, that's okay, I think, you know, it is a really nice... Um, book and it does seem to be a very well written um, rule set and I'm very much looking forward to playing it so thank you very much for watching guys please um, check this out if you feel like picking it up um, if you'd like to see any more of our videos please have a look for them and check out the way to fire Facebook page and the way to fire podcast and please like comment and subscribe and of course if you feel like you want to buy any stuff, unfortunately don't have the Baron's Wars, then check out Goblin Gaming using our affiliate link in the show notes. Thanks very much everyone, take care, bye.